there, I'm JD. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please hit like, and if you want to get a hold of me, please email me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com and let's get on with this video. Today's video is about opening watch case backs. There's two reasons you open a watch case back. One is to get access to the movement to regulate the movement. The second one is actually to remove the movement as part of a watch servicing. So we're gonna go through the various case back openers from very simple to very complex. So here I have two pretty standard watches here. Um, I have a wrist watch and I have a wrist watch with a screw on case back and I have a pocket watch and I have a pocket watch with a screw on case back. These are my first two examples, and let's go through how to open these particular cases with the very simple tools that you need to open watch case backs. So the very first tool you can use to watch, open a watch case back is right here. They're called thumbs. This tool may or may not be useful depending on how hard your case back is on and the friction required to do this. You can actually put on a pair of dish gloves, the yellow dish gloves, that will give you enough friction to actually grab the edges of the case back and open it. For a watch that's waterproof, you're likely not gonna be able to open this with your thumbs. For a pocket watch, however, um, it might be loose enough from servicing, and if it's not waterproof, which most pocket watches aren't, then your thumbs might be adequate to open the case back, just like I'm doing here. So, and when you're tightening it, you're also tightening it with your hands. So it's not really getting that tight and you don't want a pocket watch uh, case back to get so tight that it's impossible to remove just with your hands. But we'll get into the problematic case backs in a second and how you can deal with those. The third kind of case back may be the most painful type. And these are the case backs that are snap on. And I'll give you some tips on how to deal with snap on case backs later. We'll deal with the snap-on case backs at the very end of the video, but they can be the most troublesome case backs to open uh, given the way they're put on, that they snap on, and the tools that needed to actually take them off, and the tools needed to press them back on again. So what you're going to run into from pocket watches typically are screw-on case backs. You do have snap-on case backs occasionally with cheaper brand pocket watches, and I have dealt with the snap-on ones that are not that difficult to open usually but let's deal with the screw-on case back so as i said before first of all your thumbs are your best tool if you're having a problem opening it with your thumbs you may want to put on yellow dishwash dishwashing gloves and that'll give you more grip and friction needed to just turn that bezel for the case and open that up this is a hamilton uh, 21 Jewel Railroad Grade Salesman Case Pocket Watch. It's a thing of beauty, baby. Thing of beauty. So, one of my favorite watches. So, this particular watch, you would open the case front, front of the case back with your fingers as well to set the time on it with a lever. It's a lever set watch. And you'd open the back of the case with your fingers. Now, where I've had trouble opening the case uh, with my fingers, there's other tools that you can use. So the first tool you have, which is vintage and very useful, I find, I'm not sure where I found this, is a vacuum watch opener. Look at that. It even says vacuum watch opener. So probably made by Hoover. So this watch opener has got two sizes, smaller size for size 16 watches and a bigger size for size 18 watches. So here we have a size 16. I think the smaller size could go down to actually size 6 watches probably not size zero because size zero would be way too small for this so i'll say 16 and six size pocket watches so if i were to open this with this i'd probably use the wider end here you put that over the top of this watch here now because this watch has de got decorations on the edge it's not going to provide that suction that you need so this opener although it'll probably work as you can see, turning it works. You've got some friction there, it does work. Uh, if it's a plain case, it's much better, and it does work well with a plain case because it'll grab that case. So, so this will work for that. So this is a good watch opener. You clean it up. It doesn't hurt for it to be a little tiny bit 
uh, moist when you do this because it gives it a little bit more friction and doesn't slide. So this is a vintage case back opener. It does work, but we have better case back openers than that. So the second case back opener, I guess the third, if you if the third if you include your thumbs, is this ball. So this is a ball. You can buy these from AliExpress. This is made in China. Um, it is a ball specifically made for opening watch case backs. It has a nozzle in here just like you would have on a basketball so you can inflate it a bit. You want it a bit deflated but not too much so it's kind of spongy like that. And for this uh, case back opener it uses total friction so you press this against the watch like so. And I'm using a salesman's case here with a see-through case back and you would normally not have that unless you have a very high-end watch and you take this ball and press it against this like this and it provides enough friction for you to turn that case back. I've used this ball a million times. It almost always works. It's very rare that I can't open a pocket watch that's a screw on back with this ball. It's exceptional. You can also use this ball, since I'm in this, to open watch case backs and it has worked for that as well where I've had really nasty watch case backs that wouldn't open but when you have the screw on here, you can just use that. See, it turns that nicely. So it will open watch case backs, but there's better solutions for this. But the ball is excellent for pocket watches. So go buy one. They're about a buck fifty on AliExpress China. Now the third or fourth tool, I guess, if you count your thumbs, is this one here. So this is used to open watches or pocket watches that have a snap-on case back. So it has a blade in the front. It's not super sharp, but it's sharp enough to get underneath a groove. And you hold it and you, get, you need to get one with a decent handle on it, right? Like this one here. Not very expensive again, um, but it's got a very good handle on it. And what's the brand here? It is, who knows, it's called something gong. So this is obviously made in China. And on pocket watches, you would find a small lip on usually on the right hand side, upper right hand side, where you pry this into the lip like so. And all you do is twist back and forth a bit and then twist up and that'll snap the case back off. No problem. So this is a pretty simple way of doing it. Now you can buy higher end ones of this as well. Now briefly dipping into the world of really strange case back openers. I bought this bag of, I don't know what the hell they are, case openers, and here they are. And so these case openers are obviously made for a certain specific type of watch that's got eight sides to it. Is that eight? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that's eight sides. And they have all kinds, it's called multi-fort, multi-fort, and they have all kinds of sizes that you can pick from to open up watch cases. These ones here seem to be already riveted in place and won't be able to be used for op opening watch cases. The rest of them are size and you can use them for opening watch cases. I don't think I've ever, ever used these, by the way. So a complete waste of money if you see these on eBay. Do not buy them. So the only other note for opening pocket watch case backs is to get yourself one of these. These are, again, you can get this pretty cheap from China or you can get some Amazon. And these are priceless for holding the watch in place, whether it be a watch or a pocket watch. And what you do is you throw a piece of cloth over the top because whatever you put in here could get damaged when you grab it. So this is this here you will grab and these things are adjustable to, to adjust for the size of the watch or the size of the pocket watch you're working on. And there's a flat edge to this too. If you lower it low enough to grab, you can use the flat edge. I found this thing to be very useful when I used this and combined it with the ball for actually getting deep in there and turning the uh, pocket watch case. It was usually a, a normal pocket watch case, size 16, size 18, that was just stuck on from 100 years of corrosion. So I put it in this, make sure you put a cloth on there so you don't scratch it, and then you put the movement on top, whether it be a watch or pocket watch. For a watch, if you look at this watch sitting in here, it's sitting in here like this and you're grabbing it by all four edges here and you're closing this down. So sizing it is, is, a, is important. Once you've got it closed down here, I'm not too concerned about this watch, by the way, because it's a $20 made in China watch. 
I've got it in there nice and snug right now. Um, it doesn't have to be too snug and it can even float a bit because you're going to be pushing down on it with one of your watchmaking tools. And it's either this tool or the second tool we're going to review really quickly, which is this tool. So now that we're looking at watches, um, this tool is the most standard tool you can get for opening a watch. Um, you All you do is turn this wheel here to increase the uh, diameter of these two I'll call them thingamajabi doohickeys. Let's call them needles for this video. So you're opening up these, let's call them pins. <laughs> you open up these pins, and the pins are aligning with the, the notches here for the watch. So you can simply put this in and measure it carefully like that. Once you get it in the notch like this, you can tighten it up just a bit like that and then grab it with your fingers and turn it like this and that's how this this tool works if it's uh, very stiff like if this case back is on extremely tight then again you can grab your handy dandy uh, bench uh, grabber tool thingamajabi doohickey tool it probably has a name and we're going to look that name up in a second and you can throw a cloth on this like I said before and it's important because you'll scratch the movement or the case and you don't want to scratch the case so you put this uh, in this tool like this and I just have to widen this up so it'll accept it so now it's in the tool and I don't need to tighten this a lot because you don't want to bend any components on the case and then you can take this tool now and then go over the top like this of the tool use both hands now on, on the edge and then turn this and the value here is you're going straight down, you're using both hands, so you're putting equal force on that. If you don't do that and you're holding it with your hands and you're holding this with your other hand, there's a really high chance of slipping. If you slip, then the pin on the end here will scratch the back of that movement. So if you scratch that movement with the pin, you can get rid of the scratch using a Dremel tool, um, but why? Why, uh, why do that? If it's a very high-end watch, then I don't recommend using this tool, and we'll go on to other tools that are uh, usable. So since I'm talking about these tools, let's bring out another tool. This is the next tool that people seem to buy in their quest for watch openers. They're not very expensive. They come in a pack, and they also come with different ends that you can put in there to, uh, to facilitate sizing for opening up watches. And these, these tools, these things are, you just pull them out and, and some of them are high end, some of them are medium end, but, but here's how it works. There's two sizing uh, mechanisms, wheels here. This sizing one shrinks it down like this, right? And then the handle itself is a sizing uh, device. And as you turn this, the handle also shrinks this one. So it moves it inward. So then you're looking at trying to align three parts of your watch. You have one down here and you look at the side and say well that's not that's not close enough so let's let's see if we can put it in here so i'm going a little tiny bit close up here but let's just do this and see what happens so you've got one size you're putting on the edge here like this and then you're looking at the other side here and saying that's got to go way out um, and then you're turning the wheel until it goes out as far as it can and in this case it's actually not going to go out far enough is it let me think. No, it actually is not going to go far enough for this particular watch. So this tool can't be used, but you do this, size it, and then you would do the rear end one, the back one, last to move that to the right size. And then you would grab that and then crank it. And that gives you more grip. But again, the difficulty in using this particular tool is actually not the grip you're getting. The difficulty is keeping all three of those pins down with equal pressure because the handle in the back doesn't allow you to do that. You'd have to push down from the top to keep equal pressure. If you don't have equal pressure, then you're likely pushing down too much or pushing up too much, and these pins will come out of the slots and they'll scratch your watch. I don't use this watch, this opener ever. I never, ever use this opener. It was a complete waste of money. It looked like something that'd be useful, totally useless, for opening watch cases safely. I'd rather use the dual one and hold it with two hands and put it into this device here, which grips the watch very nicely. 
So I would not recommend at all using this particular opener. If you folks have one of these and you use it and you use it well, fine. But I find that it's too easy for one of the three to slip out and scratch your watch and you don't want that situation. Now, as I said before, the ball can also be used for opening the watch here, but why bother when you've got these notches that you can use with a proper watch opener? So this is an Anchor brand case holder jumbo with base. This is what it's called if you're going to search for this jumbo with base. So it's case holder jumbo with base. I do recommend getting this. I've used it a lot. It's excellent. Costs you very little. This one was from from esslinger.com so you can get them from esslinger.com likely you can find these um, uh, online on Amazon as well as going to a watch uh, supplier like Esslinger so it's probably going to be cheaper from Amazon and you can probably buy it again from China directly with AliExpress which is going to be half the price now going into the world of strange case back openers I managed to pick this up from Switzerland and it is strange so let me open this up. It's actually a little bit difficult to open, which is kind of also strange. It's like it's meant not to open. You got to kind of pry it open. It's a wooden box and it's got a wooden connector and a wooden dowel here. So wood, wood, wood. In here, it's got all the various sizes. So it's got what says the grooves of the key to be used, right? And it's got the number of notches of the watch right so that's the number of notches of the watch case so two three four five six so if you have this is six six notches on this watch case so you're likely going to use six and the keys you're going to use are one four eight so what this thing does i'm going to try to assemble this and you just bear with me because i haven't used it in a while so there are your notches there right so these are fit in here and you pick the right key. So as it said here, I said 148. I may actually have 148 in there right now, but let me see if I can. You have to actually loosen the screw here to take this out. So I'm gonna do that and pick a screwdriver and see if I can loosen one of these. And this is the world's most inconvenient watch opener. So I've loosened that up and I think these just pull out of the position here. I just have to loosen it a bit more to make sure uh, it's out of position. There we go. Is that going to come out for me? No, it isn't. Uh, let me see. No, it's not coming out. That's tight, tight, tight. I'll leave that in for now so as not to disrupt the equilibrium of the world's most complex watch case opener. I'll try this one over here and see if it's giving me any better luck here in doing this. Just unscrew that. It should loosen up enough to pull that out. There we go. So there it is. This is, and let's see if I can find the number here. This is a zero. So the zero would be matched with the zero two six, right? So this is a zero. And if you look at this up close, you can see the little zero. You can see the little knobby that would fit into the groove. So and this is for opening uh, one with four notches. So I don't, I'm not even sure if that would work with this particular specific watch. Actually it should because there are six notches but every four notches are in the right position. So, so let me screw that back. So then you have that situation with this, right? This tool here. And then this knob in the back is for sizing. So you loosen these up here. See if it's going to be able to size for me. And when you turn this, it should size. <laughs> it should, in most countries, it does size. There we go. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I know what I got to do. I know what I got to do. I screwed up. This stays tight. This moves, and then it sizes. There we go. So you loosen that up like this. It's been a while since I used this tool. You loosen that up, and then it gives you the ability to size it and these move in and out so that is actually pretty cool so if i were to size it for this watch i'd have to and the problem with this watch is my one two three four are more narrow so i would have to install the ones with six um, and you can see the numbers here zero one two three four five six seven eight nine so i'd have to install a different one but i would align those up 
and they're equally aligned. That's the problem. So in this particular watch that I'm using as an example, the two here are more narrow than the two here, which would be one, two here. So they're more narrow, so this de device wouldn't work. But you put that, you size it up properly, you put the watch in here like this, and this device here is for holding the movement in place. So you're actually holding the movement in place with this device. And it's kind of like the device I showed you before, but but it's got these pegs here and these you can loosen these up to move them back and forth for proper sizing of this to hold the watch in place. You throw this in for the halibut. So obviously, let me just move this back here. Uh, this is made for older watches that aren't as big as this. This is a made in China quite a big sized watch that would fit in there, but the older watches would likely fit into this case like this. And then you would basically clamp down on that. This would hold the watch in place and you would grab this. Once you've got it sized right, you would take this knob on top here and you'd tighten that. And now these won't move. And then you have, now you have the situation where this knurled bit can be grabbed and you can take this part here, you've got this on a bench, and you grab this here and you twist it to open the watch. This is how this works. It's one funky, crazy looking watch opener, by the way. So you guys can give me a comment on that. Anybody who's used one of these, it's from Switzerland. So the Swiss were engineering department went nuts when they built this thing. Um, I think maybe they should have had the week off and said, go back and build something more practical, okay? So this is like crazy, crazy non-practical watch opening device. So the CNPWOD for acronyms. And these are all the different th things, pins or little attachments you can put on for actually opening the watch. And you've got to line them with this so you've got it all set. So this is the craziest watch opening device that I own. Um, see if that fits back in here somehow. And so I don't recommend using this. It's not really necessary. I don't think I've ever used it for any watch. I just saw it and thought, hey, that's one funky looking tool. I got to buy it. <laughs> Esser, Switzerland. Ich bin kein Stuhl. I am not a chair. So now look at, let's look for a minute at the Rolex case back. So here's a picture of a Rolex case back. You'll notice the knurling on the side of the Rolex case back. And that causes all kinds of issues opening these case backs. The ball can be used to open the case back in some instances, but most of the time these things are sealed pretty tight and you have to have some kind of a Rolex case back opener. So if you Google Rolex case back opener or you go on Amazon and you type that, this is what you're going to get. This is a Rolex case back type watch opener and it's got six different dies. The dies are those black rings here that you choose depending on the size of the case back that you want to open. And the dies have the, uh, the uh, knurling, so the mirror image of the Rolex case back on the die so it can fit in. So when you open this thing up, it looks kind of like this. I've taken one die and the actual opener out of here, but the opener looks like this and I have a die in place here. So this would fit in here and the opener would be sitting in there. So this is, this is what you end up getting when you purchase this. So let's look at what this looks like with just the opener and a selected die. And this is not lady die, okay? These are just dies. So if I look at these dies up close, let's do that and see what the knurling actually looks like. So this is what you get with this die and this, I'll call it knurling. There may be another name for this, but these ribs are knurling are matching the case back and the spacing that Rolex puts on their case backs. So when you lower this onto the case back, it'll grab the, the knurling as well. As well, these are angled, as you can see, and this angling allows it to slide over their accompanying uh, knurling on the Rolex case back, and it just will match perfectly. So if there's another name for this, just let me know in your comments for this these marks. I just call it knurling for now. Um, and this fits on to the case back opener, this thing here, and there's a very small uh, ball bearing here that's spring loaded and my thumbnail is long for opening pocket watch case backs that are snap-on just to let you know or fronts 
So all you do with this is you align these two up like that and you push this in and it should just hold it in place like that. So there you go. So that's now held in place. And then all you do is with a Rolex watch is you would lower this onto the Rolex watch. You'd apply pressure and turn it. Again, the best thing to use is that jumbo case holder that I showed you earlier. I've used this before with a jumbo case holder so you can have equal pressure on both sides, not using one hand while you're turning this under control. But I do have a better solution for this. So it turns out they do call it recessed knurling. So that, that uh, those teeth-like grooves around that case back are called recessed knurling. So in my continuous, never-ending hunt for the best tool, I found this tool for opening Rolex case backs. So let's have a quick look at this specific tool. So the features of this tool, first of all, it is bench adaptable. If I loosen this, this also comes out. There's a groove down here to hold that in place. There are screws to put this on a bench for stability, and I totally recommend that if you're going to open a Rolex watch using this. Uh, these here are aluminum. They're not steel. They're aluminum. And then, and then these left-right-handed screws are put in here to allow you to close down on the watch and to open the watch. So let me just throw this cheap $20 Made in China winter watch in here to see if I can get any grip on this. So you end up... There's not a lot of sizing options with this watch, with this particular open, opener. It's good luck. Good luck for sizing is what I'd say. So... And I'll give you a summary at the end, but but it has a handle on it, and the handle is used for gripping. And you put the handle in here for gripping, for allowing you to turn it. Then it has dies, and I've got a messy bag full of greasy dies. Everybody should have a messy bag full of greasy dies, by the way. So here's a greasy die, right? And look at the grease on that friggin' thing. This is like disgustingly greasy. This would never rust. This could be found in their sarcophagus with uh, toot uncommon, uh, or if he was common back in there, it would be toot common, but which means very common in French. Toot common. <laughs> so toot uncommon is very uncommon in French. So anyway, enough French humor. But these dies uh, attach pretty simply to this device here. This device has a spring on it. So let me get a little close up of it. There, if I have a focus issue, I apologize, but there's a spring here, and as you can see, it's spring-loaded, right? So as you tighten this here, this screw will tighten down on the watch movement, but let's get this, this, this in first. And you can see there's a little knobby here, right, a pin, and that pin aligns with the hole that's on this thing here. So you've got the, the pin aligning with the hole. Let me see if I can find the right hole and pin here. I think it's right around there right it's aligned and then there appears to be some kind of a gasket or something around there i'm going to take this watch out of here so we can have a better look but there appears to be a little bit of a gasket on the rim there as you can see it and so you align these up you snap that in then you turn this down towards the watch very carefully and the watch is in there the rolex ten thousand dollar cheap rolex is sitting in this rig Hopefully you've got some protection in there for the Rolex and you're lowering this rig like this onto this and it's going to tighten up when it lowers but when you tighten it the spring here tightens as you can see so that's tightening I probably will crack something but that spring is actually tightening so it's giving it some 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 good friction I think is what you'd call it but then you take this peg here and you throw that through here. Now, in this case, I've tightened it too much, so I can't get the peg through. So just loosen that a bit, and now I should be able to get the peg through. So there it is there. You could probably use it just with the end on there. And then the theory is, now I take this and I turn it like this, and it opens the case, right? So the knurling would be, would be matching the, the tapered knurling on the Rolex, and the whole thing would open. So here, that's, that's all good. So functionally, looks like it would work. Functionally, it looks good. Everything is fine. Two problems with this. First of all, this holder is, how do, what do I describe this holder? It's whacked out. I'll say it's whacked out. It looks like there's two openings on either side here 
and those openings is where the lugs would fit, right? Well, obviously, if you have got a, a larger size watch, the lugs aren't going to fit into the opening. So if the lugs were to fit into the opening, then this might hold the, the watch okay, I'll say, um, where there's reasonable size lugs in here. Uh, but not all Rolexes are small, so you're going to have problems with that. The second thing is that this is going to scratch your Rolex. So it, you need to throw down some cloth or something before you'd put a Rolex into here. I would not use this device on a Rolex. Any Rolex that's worth more than a thousand bucks, I wouldn't put in this thing. Even then, I probably wouldn't put it in this thing because this thing just scares the living shit out of me, okay? So I bought this with the intent of using it to open a Rolex cases. Once I got it, I thought, this is the worst possible thing I could do for the customer would be using this on their beautiful Rolex and ending up with a not so beautiful Rolex. So my recommendation, although functionally it seems to just have the open and close thing, these things here being metal is a, is a game changer. It's a no-show, Borjo. So you don't use that because you will scratch your Rolex. It is not recommended. So when you see one of these online, run. And here's another picture of the beast that scratched a thousand watches. <laughs> and I'll tell you honestly, I have never used this to open a Rolex case ever. The other cases that are Rolex based that have the knurling are San Martin cases and some of the knockoff Rolexes that where they have or the Tudors where they have tried to emulate a Rolex. I have some San Martin watches that are excellent watches, by the way. Um, and some of them have the, the SW, what is it, 200 movement in them, which is very nice. And most of them, though, have the NH35 movement, which is a Seiko movement that's produced in mass production, but it's still a good movement. But the cases on the San Martin are excellent, and I wouldn't even use this on my San Martin watches because I'd be, first of all, embarrassed to use it, and secondly, I'd be worried about uh, using this to, to actually open it up. So, so that's enough about this tool because this tool just scares the living shit out of me. Oh, and I'm also stuck with this tool for life because I wouldn't sell it to anyone. Um, if I sold this tool, somebody bought it, I'd tell them it's not that great a tool. Don't use it on expensive watches if you still want to buy it. But I would avoid even selling this tool for uh, reputation reasons. Now we're going to flip over to the gem, the tool of all tools. It's going to be a little bit hard to explain. And you've seen various versions of this tool, and I have a very good version of it. So let's get into this tool and see what this looks like. So here is the watch case opener golden tool, I think it's called. So this thing weighs, I'd say, around 10 pounds easily. This thing is heavy as shit. So it's around 10 pounds. So working from the top to the bottom, on the top I've got the device used to grab the tool and turn it with the two red handles and I think you need red handles because if you don't you're not going to sh be sure where to put your hands <laughs> so so they put two giant knobs to make it obvious I don't think these knobs screw well they do look everything just screws off so these screw off as you can see I didn't know that happened but but everything comes apart on this thing so maybe probably for shipping so from here you've got a spring and this spring is actually used to help you lower the tool onto the watch right and as well uh, moving down from here you have the base of this of this tool the whole solid base of this tool and it looks like it is some kind of steel maybe it's iron not sure but it is heavy as hell so cast iron likely i think cast iron i suspect um, the spring uh, uh, then helps you adjust this. So this screw here then goes up and down. So once you've adjusted it and it's gone down to the right uh, depth, uh, then you just adjust that. If you have it all the way to its opening, the spring will push it all the way back up again. So, and there you go. And it kind of just moves like that, which is interesting. So you'd press it down to where these these pins are in the grooves for opening the watch and then you've got that so so let me just get this is sort of out of the way so let me talk about the base of this so you have this device here on the base right so in the I'll say this is the back in the back of this first of all you've selected the right two pins that you need to open this watch and I'll show you the case where it has different types of of pins you can use to open a watch here's the watch the assumption here is 
two of these two of these pins will be used and that's it just like the very first opener i showed you two of the pins will be used so these these screws and these screws are used to stabilize the pins so you need to size the pins first so this screw here is used to size the pin and just like the other screws they're left and right together so that the when you turn this it'll size it so let me do that I'll turn it inward so I'll loosen these and when I loosen this then and loosen this the pin will just drop out so these are holding the pins in place these ones here in the back so I put that pin back in look at the direction of the pin so I've got the slanted part facing outward on here and I'll show you that in the close-up camera in a second but I'll push this pin back in let me see if I can just tilt it here for a second so I can see what I'm doing um, push that pin back into place like that and then I want to tighten this and there's a flat area of this pin so it knows that it's in the right position so let me just tighten that up like that now the pin is in place and it should be the right depth as well and if I look at it I'll see the depth is correct I'm sorry for my head going away and once I've got the right size and if I turn this wheel you'll see these pins go inward and let me flip to the other camera because it's much better to see this up close all right now we got a little bit of a close-up here and so these screws here um, are used to hold these pins in place like I said so you loosen that up and the pins will just fall right out and if I push them up to their highest point and tighten them and these again are knurled to hold them in place same with this one here now you've got them in place and if I can tilt this back you'll probably see the screw underneath can you see that screw underneath uh, no it's impossible to see the screw underneath but the screw underneath interacts with this screw in the side which allows you to move these in and out so once you've sized it perfectly you use the side screws then to hold these in place so all you do is turn these side screws like so got to make got to get this camera to focus um, like this and that they'll effectively hold these in place right so now you've got the side screws and they're basically righty tighty lefty loosey holding that all in place um, these have these are knurled plus they have a screwdriver a single slot if you really want to make sure those are tight you don't want to screw that up so so let's assume that I've got this the right size I go down below here so what do I have down here let's have a look so again I've got another screw here that allows me to move these inward and outward like this I've got knurled screws in the front here that allow me to take this and take the die out of here completely right so these are actually well oiled as well and I'll show you the types of dies that I have for this but it allows you to take this die out and put it back in make sure it's stable and then tighten it these are all steel on the bottom steel shaft and these are some sort of a polymer material plastic like hard plastic like polymer material in the die so this is a pretty cool thing so this could be the photo for my video right here so 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 same thing on this side you loosen that you put the die in now you've got to put the watch in place so I'll grab a watch here and see if I can throw that in so I want to open that up to the width of the watch the die allows me to put the lugs on either side you can still lay down even though the die is not going to scratch the watch you can still lay a cloth down here if you're concerned about scratching the watch you can still put a cloth down in the middle um, but what I like here I think is the dies they have a little groove right there on the side that'll stop the watch from going any further so it drops down to that groove and then catches that groove to stop the watch which I think is a pretty cool design feature so let me just see if I can level that off like this and then turn it so it's a little hard to do while you're while you're on camera but I'll I'll try here so I've got it like this I've got it in place um, I want to I want to lower this now so it fits perfectly and I know it's touching here which is nice but the other side is too low so let me just close it a bit and see if I can find home here there we go oh I had it I had it I had it Jerry I just turned this the wrong way so we just move this in again something like this I think 
So we'll leave it like this for now, otherwise I'll be farting with this forever. So, so this is, you put this in place, stabilize it, and you can turn it and it's tight. So you've got that in place now. Um, it shouldn't drop down because of that, the bottom part of this polymer material holding it in place. So you've got it like this, and now you want to size the grip. So the best way to do that, and I can turn this, right, is to actually press down on the top because of that spring I showed you earlier, this spring here allows you to press down like this. And I want to make sure it's close, right? But then I'll use this screw here to get it even closer after I get it down to size. So I can actually fit it down as low as I can possibly fit it. Um, and then I want to make sure that these, these guys are in the right, the right size. They're not too small. Now in this case here, I need to unscrew these to allow it to go as wide as it can possibly grow, go. And I've got two of these here, so I'm unscrewing them both. So now that this can come out. So now when I turn this, it widens for me, right? And if I get this thing wide enough, and I'm watching on my on my computer and not being not paying attention to my uh, my camera. So there we go. So now it's in place, and it is in place in front and back, I believe. So I think I've got contact front and back. So now I've, I'm pressing down here, but now I can simply roll this thing up to where it needs to be for tightness. And now I've got it like this. I can actually turn this to tighten it a bit more, right? So that's, that's a pretty good utility to be able to do that. So now there's the situation. So I've got this in place. These, I think, are both in there. Let's take a look on this side here. And this one here seems to be off, so it's not in there, which means the watch movement is probably tilted a bit, right? It's a poor example of, of being able to do this properly, by the way. So I don't think this is in. I, uh, I think it's slightly out. But let me see if I can move that down a bit. If I move this out a bit, like that, and then move that down, will it find home? That's the question. So that's kind of in place there, I think. So there we go. And you can see they're both in the slot right now. And now the next thing I would do to tighten these, right, so they stay in place and it tightens them against the, the actual slot of the watch. And this one here would be tightened too. It's already pretty tight, so. I imagine it needed to be where it was right now. Let's see when I turn this, um, it's going to shift this a bit, but there's other dies I might be able to use for a bigger watch, but I'm just showing you how this thing works. So I make sure that these dies are tight. This is tight. These are tight. These are tight. This has already been in the right place. Don't worry about this. This is for installation. And now when I actually turn this thing from the top, and I'll just do it with one hand, so I turn this, then the watch is going to turn until it hits the lugs, and now the case back is turning. So you see how that's working nicely? Once I've loosened that case back like that, I don't need to do any more with this tool. In fact, once I've loosened the case back, I usually take the tool off because I don't want the distance the case back is going up to fight with the tool itself and, and where it's going when you're, when you're rotating it up. So, so just my recommendation is you loosen it, and then back off. So that's that's what I would do. Now to back off here, I've already loosened this watch as you can see, right? And again, I've got bigger dies that probably would fit better, but it does loosen the case back. Now I've done that and I need to back off. I can simply turn this here clockwise and it's righty tighty. So this will roll down um, the, the large screw that's on the inside like that. And then this will enable you to go up like that. Now, if this is super tight against this uh, case back and you've tightened this up against the sides and it's tight, just loosen the sides here, both sides like that. That will loosen the pins that are here. You do not need to loosen these. These are just to hold the pins in place. And then once you're, you're able to do that, you can loosen that and then get some support underneath the watch and then take this and then loosen this. And to loosen this, you're actually turning it uh, clockwise to loosen it, but they're double they're, they're, the screws are left and right screws to make it widen like that. And there you take it out nice and carefully without scratching anything with the dies. 
just get it out of there and then you've done your job and you've loosened the the uh, the back of the case I don't think I've ever had a situation where I couldn't open a case with this thing this thing is a beast like I said it weighs around 10 pounds it says a and f in the back and you folks can I can look this up but you guys can look it up for me and see see who the manufacturer a and f is um, I think this is a beauty and let's look at the dies for a second of this particular device so this comes with a case the top of this thing here and this is a wooden box and this comes with a bunch of pins I'll call them to open up various watch types and in this arrangement of pins it's very interesting they have the Rolex knurling so you can open a Rolex with this device and I have opened a Rolex with this device safely because the knurling is it'll accommodate a Rolex watch so and if I look at that really close I'll show you that and you can see that this is a uh, Rolexable what can I do to make this thing focus there we go so you can see that there and and so you can use these particular pins or these specific pins to open up a Rolex they have uh, smaller pins as well depending on the watch size and they've got these giant grippy pins I'm not sure if I've ever used one of these for what type of watch I'd use it for but they have those too the more important part of these of this thing is that this box here and this was Dines Jeweler Limited out of Toronto Young Street I gotta look them up and see what year that was so I think this is very vintage and in this I've got a bunch of these dies right and you can see the different types of dies here I have the the ones with the gap in it allow you to rest it down like I said and they'll fit nicely in your watch and there's another die I gotta exchange my rubber bands here but there's another set of dies here that that will work well and here's a set I sh probably should have used for that watch I was using because it's really big and this is a bigger set of dies that would have gripped that watch a lot better so I've got countless numbers of dies um, to to hold the watch in place I've never I've ne double negative here I've never not had the right die to do that so it comes with the whole set of dies I believe you can buy a similar set I think Dave out there who's got uh, who's got a watch repair channel as well um, it's and and Mike uh, out there and Mike knows who you are Mike actually did a video on this which inspired me to make this video so Mike who who actually shows his adventures in watchmaking uh, Mike showed his version of this and you can just search for watch case openers until you find something like this this one is a beauty um, I'm, I was lucky to get a hold of it uh, it can also um, mount this on a bench too and it's solid I think it's probably around 10 pounds this thing weighs a lot I'm pretty strong I can lift some pretty big weights that thing does not feel five pounds this feels 10 pounds so I can weigh it later and we'll get that for sure I'll use my little tiny dainty scale to, to, to weigh this so <laughs> so anyway so this is the king of watch uh, watch removal devices. So let's talk about the snap-on cases for a few seconds and then we'll end the video. So let me look at some old watches I have that might be a snap-on case. I got tons of watches, by the way. Um, these these, these are Ricoh watches are pretty good. I like these, these two here. Very good, keep good time. And they get this crazy button on the end that's used to, ch to change the date. So if you want me to do a review of watches, I can do a review of watches, but here's Here's a watch with a case that's a snap-on case in the back. What a pain in the butt this might be. So let me just use this watch. I'm not too concerned with it. It's a Citizen, or what is it called? A Citron? Citron watch. Quartz Citron. Probably works. All these watches kind of work. This is a C27J uh, watch from, from Italy. And this was uh, used to commemorate the C27J aircraft. It's like a mini Herc. Some of these watches are Chinese watches. This one here had a video where the guy blowtorched it and tried to get this thing to fail, and it actually worked really well. These buttons don't work. Nothing's functional, but the watch works, and it's a cheap Chinese movement. These were all my my getting a Chinese movement and seeing what I could do years ago when I was a youngin'. This is a Waltham, which is really nice on the end here, and that was given to me. Um, that is a beautiful old Waltham, and that's not quartz. That's a, That is a Waltham, so very nice watch um, anyway let's just use this and have a look at what it, what it can do here what what the uh, snap-on case back issue might be 
So usually a snap-on case back will have a, a small groove on the edge to allow you to get your case open or underneath it. I can't see one on this watch. This watch is such a poor example of a watch that it doesn't even have that. So I'm not sure how this will actually open if I don't have that groove. Can I get under here and actually get this thing open? And the answer is yes, it doesn't need a groove. So you take your tool, as I've done here, and you simply just roll it and this will open the watch. And it's a cheap watch, it still has a battery in it, but it's obviously not working. And there's your snap-on case back. Normally the snap-on case back will have a gasket around the edge here. It allows you to, for sealing it of some sort, this is a very old one here, I'm not sure why I bought this, but it's like that. Normally the snap-on case back will have a groove on it right there, and that's the groove where the stem fits through, stem slash crown fits through. So in this case you see the stem fitting through, there's the crown and the stem, and so you would align that up and you'd press it back on. So taking it off, just align up that circle with the, with the um, or that, that half moon with where the uh, stem is, like so, sorry about seeing my head and not my face, but like that. And then if you're lucky, you can push that back on and there you go, it's on. Now, I had a real challenge um, getting one of these on once. So I took it off, it was somebody's watch, it was a friend's watch I did maintenance on. I could not put this on. I took, I did the desk approach. Let me show you what that looks like. This is the corner of the desk approach of, of closing the back where you put it on the corner of your desk like that and you use your palm and you push hard to get that thing on. You push super hard to get it on. It's not gonna happen because this one's easy to get on, but I tried that. It wasn't scratching the back because of my wooden desk here. That did not work. That was terrible. Then I had somebody tell me, well, it's obviously you need to contract it somehow. So why don't you just put it in the freezer and the freezer should contract the metal. Then you'll be able to snap it back on. So I said, all right, that's a that's a great idea. Let me just put that in the freezer. So like an idiot, I put this in the freezer. It wasn't this watch, but I put it in the freezer. Next day, I tried to snap that on with my hands. I tried to use a desk move. I tried everything to snap that on. Now I'm going to show you the simplest way to adjust the case back to be able to snap it on. This is the best tip. I'm even going to put it in my video up front saying, end of video, best tip ever, right? You're going to watch this and say, oh my God, this is crazy good. So the first thing you need is some kind of crystal insertion set. So I have the GS model uh, made, I believe in Michigan, but it's made uh, with uh, the GS insertion tool. This is what it looks like. And so you take this insertion tool out and you select one of these plungers that's not too big, kind of a, a half the diameter of the case back. I'll, I'll pick this one for the heck of it. And then you select a, uh, a die here that's around the size of the case back or a little bit shorter or narrower than that. So maybe I'll go for this one here, this die here, probably fits nicely. So I pull that out, get rid of the rest, because you don't need anything else. Now the problem is this case back won't go in. So the only way the case back is going to go in is if the, this diameter from here to here shrinks. The only way to sh shrink the diameter, or the best way to shrink the diameter, is like this. You put this onto this die. First of all, you put this in. So you do things in order, mister. Put this in place here, which is the pusher. And this is rubber. You put this in like this, like that. And don't do it this way. Don't do it from the back of the case. Do it from the inside of the case back, like that. Put that down like this and just press on it, like that. When you press on that, press inward, the diameter of, of this shrinks ever so slightly. You don't need to press too hard. You need to just press it a bit, try it out, try snapping the case on. And then if it doesn't, press it a bit more, try snapping the case on. That put the case on without any problem. Everything else I tried didn't work. Everything, all kinds of pressure, pushing it from the edges, everything didn't work. This is the best technique for putting a case back on. Share this with others. This is gold, Jerry, a great technique. And on that note, 
I believe I'm done talking about cases, case back openers, and all of the tools you have and how to use them. So, so thank you very much for tuning into this video. Um, I enjoyed making it. It's a crazy bunch of tools that you have to get to, to make sure you get those cases off without damage and back on also without damage. So thanks for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping to get to 10,000 subscribers. I'm at 9,700 right now. I'm so close. So please subscribe. I've taken some time to show you all this. If you want further videos on anything, let me know and I'll, I'll make them. So thanks again. I'm waiting for parts for a few watches to normal to finish their repairs. Once I get those parts, I'll do the repairs and I'll put the videos up. So take care, be safe, and have a good weekend.